Good morning, good afternoon, good night, everyone. Um, I'm Valentina, I'm the ES officer, um, and welcome to the first webinar uh, for the Central Asian region. Um, the topic today is Emerging Challenges of Particulate Pollution in Eastern Mediterranean Countries. Uh, we have two speakers, uh, Professor Mervat el Hoss and Dr. Sama al Dabab. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your names. Um, just uh, as we always do in, in, the ES, in the ES webinars, the code of conduct, please be polite and respectful to the speakers and to all the participants. Please type your questions in the chat box. Um, and after the presentation of the speakers, we will have a Q&A session. And um, this meeting uh, is being recorded. Um, we will upload the, the video to our YouTube channel afterwards. Uh, not today, maybe uh, between tomorrow and, and, th and, and Thursday. Um, since this is the first webinar for the region, um, we will give you a brief summary of the, of the ES community. Um, Manish Kumar is also here and he will, he will help me uh, with this presentation. Um, he, he will introduce himself later, but he's, he's an active ES member and he has been regional representative uh, from, for the uh, South, Southeast, Southeast Asia region um, previously. So, and he has been with ES for several years. Um, just a little bit of the history of YES. Um, YES was established in 2010 in Hamburg, Germany. Uh, a group of, um, a group of uh, young scientists from the Max Planck Institute created. Um, and during the first four or five years, uh, it was mainly a German-based German, German -based, uh, organization. Then it started opening a, a little bit to, to Europe. Um, and the idea is that yes, it's a community where people can connect with other with other um, young earth system science scientists from from around the world. Um, that's the, the goal now. Um, and I, also, we try to create different opportunities for the for the young young scientists. Um, not only. Uh, in different in different um, institutes organization but also globally in global in global panel and initiatives we will tell you a little bit about this later um, during the period of uh, 2014 2015 yes started to uh, grow really internationally and uh, in 2016 we have the first uh, yes elections um, where after that, we had a, a more a more structured organization um, and uh, another another big achievement from yes it, it was the the, um, the established establishment of a, of an officer of an a yes office international office uh, which is um, run by me and it's uh, and it's hosted by the Argentinian Med Service um, in Buenos Aires. Um, yes, it's a an inter, it's an international platform, as I as I as I mentioned before, uh, where a lot where we try to connect with different early career researchers from the earth system science. We are always organiz, organizing activities mainly online, like this one, but we also organize uh, side events in large conferences. Uh, of course, during the, the current situation, this not, it is not possible, but we did it um, in the past. And we also try to, to explore new ways to, to be present in, in conferences or in events um, to provide uh, skills or to provide uh, different, different kind of activities to, to engage with, um, with early career researchers. We always try to partner with it, with international organizations to to have the the voice of the youth uh, heard in these kind of organizations. Um, and we, since yes, is a fully online network, uh, we work on reducing the carbon footprint. Um, 
and we, are, we always um, encourage the regional activities. Um, so if people must travel, at least it's not a, 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 long, a, long, a long one. Um, okay, this is a, a current, a current um, map of the, of the distribution of the ES members. Uh, we have more than 2,100 members in more than 120 countries. And I, sorry for the resolution, but this is, um, this is a, a brief uh, zoom for, of, of your region. Um, as January 2021, we had 40 members in Central Asia. I know that this, this number is outdated. We, in the, past, in the past months, we have a lot of new members from different countries of the region. Uh, so if any of you are, are here now, welcome. Um, and yeah, the, the idea is that uh, that we with these kind of activities we, we we made us more visible in the region, and we also try to connect connect the connect you more with the with the early career researchers around the world, not only in your region. Um, this is uh, the like the yes structure. As I mentioned before, we have a community. Uh, with all the members. Uh, then we have a, a council uh, with um, some of the most active members. Right now, the council has 30 members. Then we have four working groups. Uh, any yes any member can join a working group. We have the outreach one that uh, works uh, with, the, with the advertisement of events, prepares flyers, posters, presentations like this one. Um, then we have the science working group that has different different projects. One of them is a, um, a series of uh, yes interviews to different to different um, investigators around the world. Um, then we also have another project called um, yes science highlights, where every month we we advertise papers from our members. Uh, that has been published in the past month. Um, and this, this group of papers are all, also included in our website. Uh, then we have the membership management group, uh, which is in charge of the, the new profiles that we receive for, for being a yes member. Um, Taking into consideration that if you don't, if you register to yes, you don't you are not automatically a yes member. Uh, the, this this uh, membership group um, revise every every profile to to see if the expectations of the members are aligned to to yes, and then you receive an email uh, welcome to to the community, and this group is also in charge of the of the website, which has been uh, updated in the past months, and then we have the online activities working group, which um, is in during this time is really really important because they are they are the ones in charge of organizing um, online activities and right now we are also developing the first uh, yes uh, learning groups which is focusing mach on machine learning uh, and they, this group is uh, the one in charge of 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 leading this activity and then uh, we have the regional representatives. Here we have Ala and Ramia. They are the representatives from the for the Central Asian region. Um, and all, we also have an executive committee, which right now has um, eight members. Um, and they, they we have a, a really this year we have a really great diversity of of origins and backgrounds. So that's, that's something that is uh, really great. Um, taking into consideration that uh, six years ago, uh, this group was mainly German people. So I think it's a, a, huge, a huge achievement. Um, and these two groups, the executive committee and the regional representatives are elected every year by the council members. Uh, if you want to, um, if you want to be a regional representative or the executive committee, you must uh, fill an application uh, around February, March, and then um, the council member will vote. And we have the, and after that, we have the, 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 new, the new members for, for these two uh, bodies. 
And we also have the ES office, uh, which is run by me, um, like on a side because I work with the entire community. Um, this is the, um, the map of the regional representatives 2021-2022. Um, um, as I mentioned, Ada and Ramia are the, are the representatives for your region, but uh, we always, always encourage the work between regions. Um, I saw in the chat that there's someone from Indonesia, uh, but these this kind of activities are open to everyone, not only to, um, to the people in one region, but we, with these kind of activities, the regional activities, we try to um, target some, some topics that might be uh, more important or more, or more urgent for uh, the people living there. And now I will give the floor to Manish. He will continue the presentation. Thank you, Valentina, for the wonderful introduction about YES and uh, also uh, describing the activities uh, uh, in the YES, all types of activities. So uh, before going to the slides, actually, I would like to introduce myself. And uh, also, uh, I would like to share my personal experiences with YES. So I am uh, Manish Kumar. I am uh, originally from India, and uh, currently I am doing my postdoctoral research at Stockholm University in the Department of Environmental Sciences. So I have been connected with YES from uh, 2014 as a, as a simple member, but uh, I got some leading role in YES uh, from 2019 onwards when I represented YES for uh, as a regional representative for the Southeast Asian region. And I served as a regional representative for two consecutive years, 2019 to 2021. And uh, that period was uh, a very uh, fruitful period for me from many uh, perspectives. I would like to uh, share some of the good examples because uh, during 2019, uh, I was, uh, during 2018, I was in the last year of my PhD, and that period is very important for any uh, early career researcher for developing new networks for, for uh, uh, career point of view, from uh, for getting jobs or getting postdoc positions or making network with different scientific groups throughout the world. So that has really helped me to get connected with many, many uh, uh, people in my research area, as well as I also got some chances to learn some organizational and uh, institutional uh, developments, how to connect with people and how to help your uh, juniors or help your other colleagues or early career researchers to make network. So some of the important uh, experiences which I would like to share. The first one is my involvement uh, in the IPCC sixth assessment report uh, group review. So in IPCC review, uh, report, uh, there is usually a review by senior scientists and also they offer some opportunity to the early career researchers to do the review of the report. And I was leading a, a group of 20 early career researchers as a lead chair for uh, one chapter of IPCC. And that was very important chapter. It was on uh, water cycle or hydrological cycle. So my uh, important point here is that even IPCC offers any early career scientist or early career researcher to be a part of that review process or any other process. But just because I was connected with YES and YES has uh, collaborations with IPCC and other such organizations, it is very easy to get involved in those important activities. And now because of that involvement, it helped me a lot. Whenever I apply for any position or for any other thing, it looks, it appears in my CV and it really boosts the uh, magnitude of the CV. So this was one of the best experience I had with YES. As a, as a lead role. Second thing, uh, 
we present usually uh, it is one of our important activities to show our presence in different scientific conferences so wherever uh, there uh, is a scientific conference whether online or offline we uh, present uh, yes and we present our activities in the scientific conferences to uh, connect with more and more ecrs or early career researchers so as a member of uh, yes and also as a uh, regional representative i coordinated with the, the international global atmospheric chemistry project conferences and uh, one more conference uh, cordex uh, conference in china and also i connect uh, presented the activities of yes and other uh, networking things with the banaras hindu university in india so i was constantly meeting uh, early career researchers and also i during my uh, tenure i always wanted to connect the master student who uh, are potential researchers of the future so i always try to connect with master students and uh, uh, so that they could start learning the networking skills from very very beginning the third important Uh, experience which i had was uh, getting involved in some project scientific projects of my research area so i uh, developed some collaborations uh, in my uh, area uh, my region the south southeast asia with some uh, research groups in malaysia and thailand and uh, uh, other countries of the southeast asia uh, of course i am from india so i also developed some collaborating networks from india as well so these are some of the activities which i was actively involved as a regional representative however apart from all these activities there is always a chance to involve yourself as a as a, a member of a yes community by adding uh, by getting connected with the science working group because it is not just it, it does not only provide the organizational skills but also it helps to get involved in the scientific activities so we we uh, publish uh, uh, the accepted papers on the yes website every uh, after every periodical there is a, a periodical publication of the accepted papers recently accepted papers from the yes members and there are many many scientific activities where the yes community members can involve themselves so these were some of the experiences were very good experiences also i am involved with i am constantly working with some other people so these are some good experiences which everybody can get benefit with so as far as publication is concerned our yes members some active members have published some very good uh, papers uh, these are not just scientific papers but also policy papers like you can see on the screen as a um, earth system science frontiers and early career perspective what are the early career perspectives of earth system sciences or um, related to climate change or uh, what is what are the how how young researchers can integrate themselves in the ipcc process or there are many other platforms where they seek help and offer help to the young scientists as well uh, next please so um, as i said as i mentioned we uh, showed our presence in many many important global platforms global scientific platforms including uh, ipcc uh, global atmospheric watch future earth drop uh, ixu and uh, world meteorological organizations so uh, if you are a member of yes uh, most probably you might be getting emails from valentina time to time with different types of activities recently i don't know how many of you got that email that there was a chance of uh, uh, showing your skills uh, your uh, uh, you, there was a i don't know whether the date deadline has passed or not that as a early career researcher one can give talk in tedx events about uh, about climate change and uh, sea level rise so there are such opportunities and giving a talk in tedx is a very very big thing 
so such type of uh, opportunities you can get very very easily if you are uh, involved in any of the yes uh, uh, opportunities next please so uh, as i already mentioned that we yes uh, is coordinating and collaborating with international organizations uh, not just uh, not only with the climate related things with many societal and so sustainable development goals and uh, core science as well as socioeconomic uh, organizations like uh, and there are chances that these organizations have their own uh, uh, early career program so getting connected with uh, yes makes it very very easy to get connected with the early career programs of these organizations also next So uh, they are our uh, some of the very active members. They are uh, like Patan and Carla. They uh, uh, they got selected in uh, some other organizations like I said WMO or GEVEX. So so it, it is a wonderful platform to get connected with these organizations. Next. So. Recently, the last two years were challenging for all of us because of the pandemic, the COVID, and uh, most of the, us were working from home. And uh, somehow, in some of the countries where the corona situation was very, very bad, so it was very, very difficult for uh, uh, doing something uh, actively. Even in that period, yes, was very active. And in fact, I was also a part of uh, some of these uh, activities, including the IPCC six assessment report review, the early career review, and uh, we made it very, very efficiently. So even with the pandemic situation, we worked hard and, and we, we really uh, executed some of the important projects. Next. So, the question is, uh, if you get involved in, with yes, what uh, yes, what you can uh, get from yes, and what are the different opportunities one can get? So, uh, as I said, it is both. Uh, it, there are two benefits. First benefit is uh, developing your networking skills, organizational skills, and also to in, to involve yourself in scientific activities and using those scientific activities and networks and collaboration for your own career development. I personally felt that this helped me a lot just because of some basic networking, I got involved with some research groups where it, where it actually helped in my uh, career also. So these are some uh, uh, opportunities, these are some platforms like uh, career building opportunities and uh, using this webinar series like what we are having now. So yes, organizes webinar series uh, very frequently and one is always, uh, uh, one can join in any of the webinar series in any of, for any region or for any uh, program. Next. So uh, this is our uh, motto, I think this is the, uh, uh, most of the things have been explained by Valentina and also I discussed a few points with my own experiences that we believe that we can shape a, tru and shape a truly international and sustainable research network and it uh, comprises of both uh, development of uh, organizational skills and uh, scientific collaborations and opportunities for early career researchers in many, many ways. Even there are not just early career researchers, there are some senior researchers also who are involved with, the, even when I joined, I was a PhD student, now I'm a postdoctoral uh, researcher. So somehow it is helpful for every type of researcher, especially we are focusing in earth system sciences. So with this motive, I, uh, I would like to inform, uh, and also I would encourage all of you to, uh, involve more and more students, early career researchers, and other scientific uh, people who are in the earth system sciences. Thank you so much. Thank you, Manish. I will stop sharing. Um, now I will give the floor to Ala and Ramia, the regional representatives from the region. Good morning, good afternoon. I don't know what time uh, you have. 
So good afternoon, good morning to everybody. I am Ramya uh, from Jordan with my colleague uh, Ala from Jordan. Uh, we joined this um, last year, me and Ala, no Ala, we just joined, yes, last year. Uh, we represent, uh, in fact, Jordan. Uh, as uh, Valentina mentioned, we have two speakers. Uh, the first, uh, I will introduce the first speaker after your permission, Ala. Yeah. Ladies first, I will start. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I will introduce our first speaker, uh, Professor Mirvat el -Hose. At first, I um, uh, thank you for being with us today and thank you for accepting to join us as a speaker today. I will give uh, a short, uh, brief uh, introduction about Professor Mirvat before starting her uh, presentation. Professor Mirvat el -Hose, uh, she's a Lebanese professor. She's an international expert in environmental engineer. Uh, she has been the CEO of the Environmental Engineering Consultancy since 2002 and was the founder and chair of the master's degree program in environmental engineering at the University of Balaman from 2005 up to 2020. Internationally, Professor el -Hose, she has won many international awards at conferences and is an environmental consultant for various international projects funded by the World Bank, EU, USAID, and UN in the areas of water, sanitation, solid phase management, and air pollution. Again, Professor el -Hose, we are glad that you are here among us, and I will leave the floor for you. So this is the PDF, okay? Okay, okay. Yes. okay. So uh, the title of my presentation is Spatial and Statistical Analysis of Particulate Matter in the District of El Kura, Lebanon. So this is that mean a casa, that mean um, a place uh, where it has um, uh, 43 villages. You know, it, uh, it includes 43 villages. So the outline of my presentation, I'll start with introduction, then uh, perceptual analysis, experimental and statistical analysis, results and discussion, and I will have the conclusion. So I'd like to, to start with this uh, little girl and what her mother said, really it uh, affected me. One night, not long after she became first ill, I woke up to find her stiff and blue, entirely unable to breathe. I will never forget that sight. For as long as I live, my heart was in my mouth. This little girl uh, was uh, suffering from uh, asthma, was suffering from uh, uh, breathing, and uh, has, she has a health effects from particulate matter, OK? So what's particulate matter? Just a very uh, basic scientific information. So for example, this is the hair. And um, uh, if we, we compare it with the fine beach uh, sand, which is 90 uh, micrograms, so the particulate matter 2.5 is this side, you know, while particulate matter uh, PM10 is this size, you know, and this is the uh, size of the human hair. So which means that uh, the particulate matter 2.5 cannot be seen by, by your neck eye and uh, uh, only after uh, great accumulations of many, many particles to, uh, they, uh, they appear as dust, okay? So the health effect, uh, we have 25% worldwide, 29% of deaths from lung disease, 24% from stroke, 25% uh, uh, heart disease, and 43% lung cancer. In Lebanon, especially in the Gaza of Kura, the people over there are uh, suffering from lung cancer, skin rash, eye irritations, and lung diseases. Okay. So particulate matter, if we go to sizes, we, uh, it, is, it has three different scales, coarse, fine, and ultra fine. So the coarse are greater than 10, 10 micron, particulate matter fine from 2 point, uh, PM 2.5 and less, and ultra fine 0 0.1 and less, okay? So uh, physically, how particulate matter uh, formation, so the fine part particles, they have the condensation and coagulations, and after these processes, they uh, settle down in, uh, as uh, rain out or wa wash out. Meanwhile, for the coarse particle, they, uh, mechanic, uh, they have mechanical and physical uh, generations, and they settle down under sedimentation. 
Okay, so worldwide situation particulate matter, as you can see, according to WHO, the, the PM, PM 2.5 uh, should be less than uh, 10 micron. As you can see here, this is the, the Middle East and North Africa, and uh, the, the interim uh, target uh, is greater than 34, uh, 35 uh, micron. Okay, that means that we have lots of problems of particulate matter in our countries. Don't forget, we have the Sahara and we have lots of industries in this area. So the context of Lebanon, Le Lebanon is here in, on the Mediterranean uh, Sea, and this is the map of Lebanon. And here is the, the Casa of Pura or the district of Pura where, where we've made our study. Sources of burden uh, on air quality in Lebanon, uh, we have, uh, of course, as you, uh, you can see, so we, uh, we have the ambient air, we have outdoor uh, air pollution, and we have uh, indoor pollution. The outdoor air uh, pollution sources uh, of it, natural sources of, or anthropogenic sources. The anthropogenic sources, which is uh, very important in our study, uh, come up from uh, transport industry, uh, activities of agriculture, and uh, energy and other uh, accidental uh, fire uh, fires uh, that uh, occur uh, due to uh, mismanagement of uh, solid waste. Uh, we have open dumping and we have open burning of solid waste. So uh, the perceptual uh, analysis, uh, so the method used is population-based questionnaires. So, so I prepared some questionnaires to determine the irritation and annoyance levels of air pollution among citizens. Not only based on uh, these questionnaires, so with, we've uh, studied the, the villages located in the district of, uh, of El Kura, and the targeted people are the citizens and the people working in this region. Main objective emphasize the necessity of conducting such a study after examining the level of irritation caused by air pollution among citizens. So uh, we started with the questionnaires and then we did the experimental work. So the major environmental problem in Kuna, uh, based on the, the questionnaires, we have uh, noise pollution 3%, soil contamination 1%. The major pollution over there in the, in the Kura is 71% due to air pollution. Okay, uh, impact of heavy uh, industries uh, based on also the, the questionnaires, we find that uh, uh, some people, uh, they said, uh, since uh, we have industries, so it gives uh, a good image for the region. Uh, some of them, uh, they said, we have uh, job opportunities because of, uh, of the available industries in the area. Uh, it's a source of wealth, really, compared with other districts or with other regions. Uh, the people in Kura are richer and uh, uh, more uh, relaxing in uh, money than the, the other uh, regions. Uh, it has some uh, source of accidents, but the source of pollution of high and the source of uh, uh, health problem is high. Due to industries, due to high uh, traffic, of course, the, despite of uh, being wealthy, uh, uh, of being wealthy, they have the health and pollution problems. Uh, based also on the, the questionnaires, the, percep uh, the perception of uh, air quality, some people, they said uh, we have uh, very good uh, air. Uh, others, they said we have poor air, very poor, uh, poor air or poor, uh, um, uh, very poor or poor, good and moderate. Why we have such differences in, uh, in the answer of the people? Uh, the Casa of Kura, as I mentioned, is, uh, it is composed of uh, 53 uh, villages, but not all of these villages are facing the uh, industries that uh, they are in the, uh, in the region. Some of the uh, villages are facing uh, these industries, and some of them are in rural areas of this Casa, and uh, some of them are behind because the Casa has um, uh, two, two mountains, so they are on the uh, behind the uh, side of the mountains that they are, they are facing these industries. A frequency of air pollution, some of them uh, said often we have air pollution. Never, of course, the people who said never um, uh, having air pollution, these are living in rural area. What I mean by rural area, probably they can be live in a reserved area or in uh, areas which is very far from uh, the transportation and uh, the, the main highway and uh, the, the industry. Uh, always, these are people uh, suffering from uh, the uh, environmental problems. 
So effect of air pollution of uh, health in the Gaza, you know, based on, uh, we have 19% lung cancer, we have uh, heart disease, we have respiratory disease, coughing, uh, bronchitis, uh, shallow breathing, asthma, uh, lung inf uh, inflammation, uh, nose and throat irritations. Many, many people, they are, you know, they have eye irritations and uh, uh, they, uh, their eyes always, uh, you know, like, uh, like as if uh, uh, they are, uh, you know, crying and skin problems, they have rash in their uh, skin, impaired concentrations and uh, stone uh, formation. Okay, these are the, the main uh, problems uh, that the, the people of uh, Kora are facing. So based on these uh, results, uh, we said, okay, uh, the people are suffering, they have uh, health problems, there, there is uh, air pollution in the region. So let's do practically and see uh, how much is uh, this pollution uh, high or low or uh, to what uh, limit uh, they have um, uh, this pollution and uh, did they answer very well or it is uh, arbitrary. Uh, I wanted to mention that uh, approximately uh, that 250 questionnaires uh, were made. Uh, out of the 250, 225 were accepted and 25 uh, answers were rejected because we felt that they are not logic. So uh, we uh, really, we, we did a very, very fine screening of the, the answers of the questionnaires that we made. So where uh, we measured uh, the, the air pollution? So we have University of Valamand, which, which is a part of the Kura, and which um, is uh, uh, to a certain uh, way facing the, the industries that they are in uh, uh, in the Casa of Batroun, which is the Sheka region. Uh, you will see in the, in the coming uh, maps that uh, the, the, the Kura region, all of the Kura region is almost residential, uh, uh, residential educational area and uh, meanwhile uh, the Shika region is industrial reg uh, residential area. So uh, uh, on the top uh, of the, the highest building on Balaman, 25 meters uh, on the, uh, at the top of the Khuri building, we put the, the sky pot uh, post particulate matter, which is Tikora. And this Tikora, as you can see here, it has two uh, ambient collection particles. One is for PM2.5 and another for PM10. So you cannot install both of them at the same time. So you install one, the particulate uh, matter PM10 uh, for a certain period of time, then you remove it and uh, install uh, the second uh, collector, okay? So we did the, the three, uh, three trajectories. Uh, we did the one uh, sampling, one uh, period for PM10 and two periods for particulate matter 2.5. So 15 days, 15 days, and the last is, five, is one week. Uh, measurement of the ambient uh, particulate matter at uh, the UOB, University of Banaman. So we, uh, we took the, the temperature, the humidity. Uh, we weighed the, the filters before and, uh, and after uh, the, uh, using it uh, for the measuring the particulate matters. We did the sampling. And then uh, we had post conditioning at uh, temperature 25 degrees and uh, humidity 20, uh, 50%. Then uh, we weigh it. And and uh, the formula of the concentrations of the particulate uh, matter is uh, after weighing, before weighing on the total volume of the uh, air uh, sampling multiplied by 10 to the power six. So this is the, the map of Lebanon. This is the, the governorate of the north. Governorate uh, of the north is composed of Batroun, Bsharri, uh, Kura, Zgharta, Minyatani, and the Kaza of Tripoli. So Batroun, as you can see here, this is the Kaza of Batroun, which is not uh, which is the south of Kura. But this part, geologically, this part should belong to the Kura region, but politically, it belongs to Batron region. So we have Kura, and this is the, the main highway to, uh, this is the, the main, yeah, North Lebanon, then we go to, to the Kaza to Akkar. So through Kura, from Kura, we, we go to the Kaza of Tripoli. Through Kura, we go to the Kaza 
or district of Zgharta, we go to the district of Bshari, and from there we go to Manidani, then to uh, Akkar, then to Syria. Okay, so uh, as you can see, so this is the Gaza of Pura, and this part, which is the, the town of Shikka, where most of the industries are located. So this is Shika, which belongs to Batrun uh, uh, district. And these are the main villages that we took sampling uh, for. Why? Because the, the wind uh, direction and wind, we found uh, during our study that wind speed and wind direction are very, very effective for the movement of particulate matter from these in this, uh, industries located in Shika and the Batrun. So geographic locations, as I mentioned, you can see the white here. This is the Shika region, where it has the, the, the cementry national. Uh, where it has wholesome uh, cement factory, and it has uh, phosphate fertilizing companies, three different companies. And it is on the Mediterranean, where wind speed and wind direction south, south south uh, uh, west and uh, uh, here the okay. University of Balaman uh, 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 sampling uh, uh, machines where we put on the top of the of the building and uh, the, the two type of uh, wind uh, coming to uh, Balaman south southwest uh, and south uh, southeast winds. So uh, we took uh, some uh, samples from houses, we took some samples from schools and uh, some samples from and some samples from the University of Benaman. Uh, schools and homes we took indoor air pollution, meanwhile uh, from Benaman we took the, the outdoor air pollution and see how they are interrelated and how uh, if they are affected by each other. So this is the wholesome cement factory in Shikka. This is the national cement factory in Shikka. And this is the, the, the Kura. This is the Kura from Fertra, Fertalk. As you can see, this is used to be Greenland. You know, Kura is famous by uh, its Greenland. So from fertile lands, so they, uh, you know, converted into uh, cement lands. You know, they are taking the, the, uh, the cement to produce, uh, you know, the, the cement for uh, construction. Now, uh, measurement of the uh, ambient uh, particulate matter, statistical analysis, we have the hypothesis. So the sampling site at uh, UOB is more influenced by, by south, southwesterly uh, winds, than uh, south to south uh, easterly winds, as, as you can see. So it's more affected by these rather than south, south, east, westerly. Okay. Then method used to analysis of variance, uh, we use ANOVA software and uh, statistical analysis. And in the ANOVA methods, we have significance uh, level alpha, which was less than or equal to 0 0.05, uh, significant uh, levels uh, greater than 0 0.05. And uh, of course, when it is greater than 0 0.05, the hypothesis is rejected. Meanwhile, less than 0 0.05, the hypothesis was validated. And uh, the Dependent variable was the mass concentrations and the in independent uh, variables. We found that the physical uh, characterization, with, uh, which is the wind direction, was the most uh, effective uh, parameter on the particulate matter, the presence of particulate matter. In indoor, uh, we use some um, schools, so classes, uh, classrooms of uh, primary schools, and also in some houses. Here we put the, um, the, the, the equipment, and the equipment here yeah, uh, approximately one meter above, uh, uh, above floor. And also uh, we put it here in another classroom where uh, you know we can see that the, the, where the um, uh, students can breathe and we can measure the particulate matter in their classrooms. So the, the equipment used, which is the lighthouse, so it has six channels, 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 micron, up to greater than uh, 10 uh, micrometers. So it has uh, six channels. Each one goes from very fine to coarse size. For the, the indoor air pollution, the assumptions, of course, uh, we, we should take some assumptions. All uh, our assumptions were all 
spherical uh, shape and not uh, yeah, uniform shape and not non-uniform shape. And all of our particle has density 1.65 as uh, written and suggested by EPA. And density was constant during all sampling time. All particles have, uh, has a porosity of 0%. The formula for indoor uh, concentrations of particulate matter is C equal PN particulate number of each channel multiplied by four 3.5 pi over 3 uh, diameter over 2 and uh, on the, the all over the operating flow rate of the machine uh, that's mean how much is the, the, the flow rate uh, accepted by the machine uh, retrieval of back, uh, of backward uh, trajectory of air mass. As you can see, I've shown you that the map of Lebanon, Lebanon is uh, on the Mediterranean and uh, it has um, a trajectory. So we belong to, to the Mediterranean. Mediterranean is affected by uh, North uh, MENA countries, uh, Middle East and North. Uh, countries. So uh, the model uh, that we used, uh, we used hybrid single particle uh, Lagrangian uh, integrated trajectory uh, uh, software, which we used uh, to, to see the origin of air mass, uh, the sampling site at AUV. That's me for the outdoor air pollution. Where is the, the air pollutants or the particulate matter originated for the Balamand University? Uh, standards, uh, we, we have the WHO, uh, World Health Organization, EPA, uh, the state, and European Environmental uh, Agency, three different uh, standards. We follow the WHO since, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the public health in Lebanon are uh, taking standards, the WHO standards, okay? So, uh, the ambient particulate matter at UOB, so variation of particulate matter 10. So uh, as I mentioned, we did the three campaigns. The first campaign, uh, campaign was part for particulate matter 10, and uh, the last two for, were for particulate matter 2.5. And as you can see uh, here, so uh, only for uh, two days, uh, we had the, the, uh, the, the concentration above the WHO. Meanwhile, the others uh, were below. Here we had the lowest because we measured them in December, where on the 24 or 23 of December, the university stopped for the New Year holiday. Okay, so that's why we had the lowest uh, concentrations here. Meanwhile, uh, you know, you can see that uh, uh, it can reach uh, 26 uh, microgram uh, per cubic meter. So uh, during that uh, month, uh, so we found that these two uh, about the, these two uh, dates or uh, sampling dates were above 50 microgram per cubic meter, the WHO standards. Uh, mm -hmm. There were no rainfall at that time, and uh, wind direction were south southwest and uh, south 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 uh, westerly and a bit of easterly. So these are the main uh, effects of uh, wind, the relation between wind direction and concentration of particulate matter for the highest uh, concentration. So um, since we are part of the Mediterranean countries, so we have studied the, the backward trajectory of air during the first one. So air masses uh, mainly originated. So uh, we uh, uh, opened uh, according to the um, software that uh, we used. Uh, we found that the air mass is coming from Turkey after passing over the, Medi the Mediterranean Sea trajectory uh, from the Mediterranean Sea. This is dark blue from Mediterranean reach northern Lebanon and circulate over Syria. This is the red trajectory. So the purple trajectory coming from South uh, Africa and uh, from Libya is the, the lighter blue trajectory. Uh, as you can see, one, two, and three, these, the blue, dark blue, uh, green, and red, these uh, air uh, masses, uh, bring they, they, their characteristic are uh, moisture, they, have, they are moisture saturation, they have uh, high humidity and their ability to bring rain. 
So when we have uh, uh, these, uh, when we have um, uh, wind uh, coming from these regions, so these winds uh, will have rain uh, through it. Uh, meanwhile, uh, from Egypt and Libya, normally these two countries, they, they have a shortage in water and shortage in rainfall. That's why uh, when they are coming from these countries, so it comes dry. So according to particulate matter 2.5, uh, we found that uh, really we have some uh, points, some days uh, where the concentration is above uh, the WHO uh, concentrations. Uh, we found it in uh, five days above the, the, uh, the, the standard, and the same is south southwest uh, south southwesterly uh, as the wind direction. So uh, back, uh, back, back were the trajectory for the particulate matter, the campaign too. So we have the red one, uh, which uh, comes from Bulgaria, uh, Black Sea, Turkey, and then the Mediterranean countries. Meanwhile, the air mass origin, dark blue, uh, it came from uh, Ukraine, uh, Black Sea, Turkey, and then the Mediterranean Sea uh, trajectory. So the first and second, these two, uh, causing a harsh rain and windstorm that lasted for three days in Lebanon. So always, always uh, in, in that time, so the, the wind uh, bring the, the rain into it. And uh, the third one, which is lighter blue, this one, the, the light blue is come uh, from Iraq, uh, but uh, it passed uh, over Jordan, Palestine, and then it reached Lebanon. Of course, it is dry. Uh, the green coming from the Mediterranean countries, the purple coming from uh, Turkey, uh, passing through Syria, and the, the, the yellow Turkey passing over the Mediterranean countries. So this is for the particulate matter. The third uh, campaign, which is on the particulate matter for uh, a week, we find also uh, approximately uh, three or four points, uh, you can say, above the, the, the standard. And uh, the same, uh, their relation is with the wind direction, south southwesterly, and a bit of south south. So these three, you know. so the, the, the first one is the, on the standard 20.43, so it is uh, just uh, uh, the standard. So the, the origin of uh, these um, uh, sources, we have the red trajectory uh, coming from uh, Algeria, uh, Egypt, passing uh, over Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, and Mediterranean. That means it comes from the dry countries, uh, which has the, the dust, you know, the, they have the uh, uh, desert, so the so they have the the thunder dust and the dust coming from uh, from there. So air masses uh, circulated over Syria before reaching Lebanon, which is the dark blue. Uh, from the east, uh, coming from Iraq, uh, the, the, the green. Uh, Ope also traveled over Syria, then it reached Lebanon. From Saudi Arabia, uh, the light blue, which is Saudi Arabia uh, passing over Jordan, Jordan and Palestine, and then it reached Lebanon. So these air masses are characterized by lots of, uh, by hot air masses generating dust storm. As we can see, we have the deserts here, so that's why we have the, the, the dust storm. In addition, lately, after uh, some studies uh, was made uh, in uh, some Arabic countries, so they said uh, they incorporate uh, dust emissions because uh, many industries has uh, been uh, have been uh, established in the direction of uh, the the wind uh, uh, south south uh, westerly. So so not only bring the, the thunderstorm from the desert, but also the dust emissions from industries. So statistical analysis, and then uh, we, we made the correlation between the wind direction and particulate matter. And yes, we found that uh, we have a very good uh, relation between south, southwest, uh, and uh, less with uh, the, the easterly. So we don't have uh, uh, easterly uh, wind direction effect, but we have a south, southwest and south, south uh, is the high uh, correlation uh, for the uh, movement of uh, air masses from these countries to Lebanon. So statistical analysis, okay. So these come uh, now. Uh, we come to to do some statistical analysis for the industries that they in Chicago. We found that 
the, the, the alpha is 0 0.041. That's mean the, the hypothesis is validated because it's less than 0 0.05. And the, the confidential level is 95.9%, uh, uh, which is, yes, uh, the, the main source of, uh, um, of particulate matter uh, to Balaman universities coming from Shikka, Selata, which are located southwesterly positive uh, position to uh, Balaman. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> so uh, someone should open the door for the family, for the parents. So as, uh, as we mentioned, uh, Shika and Selata, Shika, which is the, the Casa of Batroun, are the main sources of uh, pollutants coming from these industries toward the Balamand University School because they are southwesterly positions. Okay, and uh, not uh, some something else. Uh, phosphate fertilizer industry in all the developed countries, phosphate fertilizer industry has been banned. You know, there is no more phosphate fertilizer industries. So the the developed countries they try to um, uh, to establish uh, these industries in developing countries where the you know. So that's why we we have it in in Lebanon, unfortunately and which is uh, one of the main sources of particulate uh, matter 2.5. So indoor air pollution now uh, for the indoor air pollution we took houses and we took some schools, uh, so we made the different uh, uh, measurements. So uh, the measurement in uh, houses uh, we we took uh, Kfar Hazir, uh, Kfar Hazir, which is uh, just the, the villages above uh, the village which is above uh, the cement factories and which is uh, close to uh, the, cement, the, the cement lands for uh, producing the, the cement. In in uh, construction. So here, the highest particulate matter concentrations was due to, in, to infiltrations from outdoor into the houses. Uh, during the day in, uh, in Farhazir, there is no uh, uh, indoor air pollution uh, in the houses, only uh, at no, uh, only after uh, 8 p.m., between uh, 8 and 9 p.m. And this is normal in Lebanon, unfortunately, because these industries are uh, uh, operating at night. Night, you know, uh, and uh, we did uh, uh, as I uh, I had uh, many I, I supervised many projects. I had another another projects which which was uh, found that uh, these industries are running or operating at not uh, at night and not during the day because uh, the people of uh, Kura uh, uh, were always uh, you know. Uh, 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 complaining about the, the air pollution in this area and uh, really uh, the first uh, air pollution I bought uh, machine that I bought for the uh, for the university was um, because uh, when I ca first came to Lebanon uh, I went to uh, put my money in the bank to open uh, an account and the lady when she asked me about the profession I told her environmental engineering she told me do you uh, do you know uh, or do you have experience in air uh, pollution or air quality, I told her, of course, this is one of my major. Uh, she told me on a yearly basis, we have 13 persons dying from lung cancer in Sheka and in Kfar Hazir. So uh, I said, really, I put uh, the things in my mind and the first equipment I bought for uh, my laboratory was the ELE uh, air, um, uh, air quality uh, monitoring. So, so in Kfar Hazir, so we have many quarries and we have the, the, the two cement factories in addition to phosphate uh, industries. Then FIA, so uh, as let's go back to, uh, to the map, a bit, a bit, a bit up. Huh? So this one, so we took Kfar Hazir, so here Kfar Hazir, which is just in this direction of Shika, we took Fia facing, and this is the Balaman, and we took Bad Bahun. Now Bad Bahun, this is a reserved area, you know, and it is surrounding by uh, by forest and uh, the houses of, uh, over there, you know, uh, only the people who are owning uh, the houses over there enter this uh, uh, this village. So it is a rural uh, area, uh, reserved area where uh, the, the air pollution uh, over there is almost nothing, you know, is null. Uh, yeah, that's me below the, the standards, okay? So, uh, 
bike. So this is the uh, Anfe. Also, Anfe just this is a Shika. On the top of uh, Shika is uh, is Anfe in the same direction of south south uh, uh, westerly. So major sources of emissions attributed to indoor air emissions. Indoor air from cooking here and uh, at night infiltrations uh, and sorry infiltrations is not relevant at these locations because let's say this is Shikka and this is Amfi so the doing direction is in this uh, this way not in that way not you know perpendicular uh, straight to to Amfi so the the indoor uh, air pollution in these uh, houses is due to cooking only. Uh, in Kaftun, Kaftun uh, lowest indoor uh, mass concentration in particulate matter, uh, 10 and uh, 2.5, as I mentioned before, this is a natural re reverse reserve surrounded by dense vegetation cover and no activity are over there. So populations are very, uh, the, the number of population is very low. So that's why the, as you can see, so the, the variation is very low. So uh, it's not about, it's not that high. So indoor levels in school. Now in school, we took three different schools based on the questionnaires and based on the residential area uh, uh, results. So we took uh, schools in Kfar Hazir, in Bishmazdin High School, and in Kfar Hata, the official high school. So three different schools. Particulate matter concentrations measured here inside the school were much, much uh, more higher than the recorder in the houses. So in school, uh, the results show uh, higher uh, than in, uh, in houses. In Kfar Hazir uh, official schools, uh, the particulate matter 2.5 was the highest among all, and also for the um, particulate matter 10. So both of them, why the, this school has the, the, high, the, the highest? Because uh, this high, high school is very close to the, um, uh, to the highway, the main highway uh, in, the, in the Kura region. And, uh, and also at the same time, uh, it is uh, very close to the quarries and to the uh, um, cement factories, so to the, to the industry in, the, in that area. So that's why uh, it's high in both PM10 and PM2.5. Farhata, lowest due geographical. Farhata, this one, the lowest, why geographical? Uh, this uh, topography, uh, this area is shielded by mountains. So uh, it's fine. Meanwhile, uh, the high concentrations, uh, as I mentioned, uh, also, we, we found uh, high concentrations of um, uh, in the schools more than in the houses because of the, the students. So the school, the students, they they were uh, going to playground, and after the, the playground, the, they uh, coming back to uh, to the the classes where the particulate matter is suspended after moving into the the classroom. So the conclusion, the questionnaires showed that citizens expressed high irritation and annoyance the level arising from the air pollution and confirmed the need to, to conduct this study. And we didn't conduct this study before making the, the questionnaires to see if uh, it is, uh, you know, uh, really we need to do the experimental study or not. A statistical analysis showed a strong correlation between wind direction and particulate mass uh, concentration. Shekka and Salata, these two uh, belong to the Batroun uh, Kaza, which is down of uh, Kura Kaza, uh, are the, the main uh, source of uh, pollution uh, in, in the schools and uh, coming and reaching uh, UOB. Uh, and also in addition to the cement factories and quarries for state for fertilizer industry and paper uh, factories, all of these producing some uh, particulate matter in the area. In addition, long range transport of particulate matter tend to be uh, chaotic. Uh, particulate matter is mechanically from university related activities. In, uh, in Banaman, particulate matter uh, 10 uh, was not uh, related or affected by the, the industry, but affected by the cars and the, the mechanical uh, things uh, occurring on the site. So, so, um, and is affected from internal uh, uh, pollution, in addition to air pollution, which is coming from uh, outside. 
indoor uh, sampling in houses is less than in uh, uh, in schools and in houses, it depends on the geographical locations of the site that we measure. As I mentioned uh, before, some um, in uh, Kaftoun, it is uh, a uh, reserved area surrounded by uh, forest and is a rural area. So that's why the, um, the indoor uh, air pollution is less than the other part. Uh, comparing with uh, indoor uh, with school, high level of particulate matter were observed due to soil being brought back into the classroom by students' shoes after playing outside and then resuspended after moving into the classroom. So uh, we, we found the, the problems that we have to give uh, solutions so a strategy to reduce air pollution. Uh, as you can see, most of the pollution over there is anthropogenic source, uh, which can be mitigated through. Uh, first of all, we need low enforcement on industries. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, I'm, you know, I feel shy to say it, but I have to say it, these industries be, uh, belongs to politicians. And you can understand what I mean. So, Dr. Merbet, Dr. Merbet, sorry, but we need to uh, fix the time. Please, you have yeah, finish, to finish. This is the last Please, because we already passed over. We finish. Time. Raise awareness. Use alternative fuels. You know, nowadays we have use renewable energy uh, in these industries. Create more green spaces, specifically for the areas which has uh, high pollution. And we don't have, unfortunately, in Lebanon, we don't have public transport in this area. So public public transport should be established in this area to reduce use the air pollution from transportation and use sustainable eco-friendly products in addition to voluntary ac actions leading to amelioration of air quality and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mervat. Thank you. Um, regarding the question, please, if anyone have, uh, has a question to Dr. Mervat, please write it on the chat and uh, we will discuss uh, later because now I need to move to uh, my colleague, Ala, to the next speaker, to, to Ala. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Ramia, and uh, thank you, Professor uh, Mervat, for this interesting presentation. I have a lot of questions, but I will, uh, dis we will discuss ready. later. I'm uh, ready. Thank you very much. And uh, now I will introduce uh, Dr. Sama Dabbar. Uh, Dr. Sama, she's from uh, Department of Atmospheric Science at Al Mustansiriya University in Iraq. Uh, Dr. Sama, she will speak today about uh, the mineral dust over Middle East and the implication on the climate. And she also, she uh, will present about the identification of uh, mineral dust using remote sensing uh, data, mainly from satellite. Uh, Dr. Sama received her undergraduate and graduate degrees from uh, in atmospheric sciences from uh, Mustansiriya University. Whereas also she did her PhD in, and she received her PhD degree in 2016. In 2014, during her PhD, she joined Barcelona Supercomputer Center as a, as a guest scientist, which is one of the pre prestigious center in the Europe for modeling uh, mineral dust, mainly over Sahara and Middle East. Uh, Dr. Sama currently, uh, She's working on combining WRF uh, ARW model simulation along with satellite data to, uh, to improve the prediction of the dust storm and uh, forecasting the dust over Central Asia. Uh, Dr. Sema, thank you for joining and uh, for joining us and uh, the floor is yours. You are welcome. Um, my lecture is about the climatic implication and the source identification of mineral dust aerosols over the major hot spot in the Middle East. The outline of this lecture will um, deal with the atmospheric aerosols, uh, their characteristics, the mineral dust and uh, their sources, uh, meteorological features generating dust event and uh, the dust cycle. Uh, as well, the uh, dust impacts on human health, on uh, daily activities, on chemical and biochemical processes, um, on climate with uh, uh, dust radiative uh, uh, impact, the direct and the indirect uh, impacts. Uh, also, um, the next section of this lecture will deal with the identification uh, of the dust sources and the uh, methods used uh, 
uh, in this in, in a study I um, I finished um, recently in 2020. And um, I will talk also about the uh, techniques that were used in this study. At the beginning, uh, I want to give a, a brief in introduction about the atmospheric aerosols, which is tiny particles suspended in the atmosphere. Uh, the source of these tiny particles could be uh, natural or could be anthropogenic uh, sources. Maybe it uh, can be from volcanic eruptions, uh, from the wildfire, uh, from the mineral dust, from pollutants, from sea spray, and etc. Um, those aerosols have uh, environmental impacts uh, and they, th those impacts depend on their physical and uh, chemical properties, mixing state, the uh, abundance of them, and lifetime. Uh, the atmospheric aerosols uh, have uh, uh, mainly four size categories, which is the nucleation uh, mode, which is the, uh, the smallest uh, mode, the etiquette, uh, which include uh, sulfuric acid, soot, and uh, organic from bio biological uh, activities. Uh, also the accumulation mode, uh, which is um, the large uh, particle, uh, um, including biomass smoke, uh, marine organic, and other uh, aerosols. And uh, finally, the uh, giant particles or the chorus particle mode, uh, which is in my case, uh, it can refer to mineral dust or uh, sea salt. Uh, for the physical properties of aerosols, we are dealing with the optical properties acquired from uh, uh, in instruments, uh, in certain instrument or from the uh, satellite. It depends on the attenuation uh, that uh, um, the beam uh, from the solar um, energy uh, from the sun uh, is, um, um, is um, sorry, I, I don't have the exact uh, word. Anyway, is facing. Uh, we can see here that the, um, the sun ray, when it comes uh, to the uh, atmosphere, it may uh, face the uh, a layer of uh, aerosols, which will attenuate this beam uh, due to uh, scattering. Uh, maybe may, it may uh, scatter the aerosols and uh, attenuate it. Uh, also, uh, some aerosols can uh, absorb the sun, and uh, uh, others it can emit it to the uh, atmosphere back again or uh, it can uh, reflect the, the long wave radiation emitted from the uh, surface uh, back again to the surface. So depending on this principle, we have uh, many uh, properties, but now I will try to uh, focus on the three optical properties, which is the AOD, uh, which is uh, indicate the attenuation in uh, uh, the beam radiation. Uh, when it passes through the uh, atmospheric uh, uh, layer containing aerosols. Uh, for a clean atmosphere, we have AOD less than uh, 0.15, which is dominated by oceanic uh, uh, aerosols. Uh, while for turbid atmosphere, it will be uh, much higher than this value. For the angular summit exponent, which is illustrate the wavelength dependencies of AOD, uh, it can also uh, uh, give an uh, indication for the uh, type of the aerosols. So if the AE were uh, having small values, uh, then this is a, the uh, chorus mode of uh, aerosols. And if it is uh, less than, uh, sorry, if it, is, if it was more than uh, one, uh, it will uh, indicate to a fine mode particles. And uh, finally, we will use the uh, absorbing aerosol index, which indicates the, uh, the absorption by aerosols. Uh, so if there is um, uh, aerosols that is absorbing, uh, we will get uh, 
uh, values of more than 0.7. And uh, for non-absorbing, we have values uh, less than 0.7 or negative values. And the uh, values near to zero, it is for absorbing by clouds. This is uh, the major dust sources in uh, Asia and South Asia. Here uh, in this um, uh, figure, we can see that we, um, the area between the Tigris and the Euphrates uh, region, which is uh, in Iraq, uh, it has mainly uh, the natural uh, aerosols. And uh, uh, when we go uh, to the west with the borders with Syria, it can uh, be uh, detected that some anthropogenic aerosols is uh, detected here. Uh, also in the uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, we can see that there is anthropogenic aerosols and um, in the uh, uh, Gulf regions also with some uh, natural uh, aerosols. As for the uh, East Asia in India, we can see that in the south of India, we have uh, natural uh, aerosols um, while for the, uh, uh, sorry, uh, in the uh, north of India, we have some uh, natural aerosols and here we have uh, some anthropogenic aerosols due to the population and um, many uh, human activities, uh, industrial activities. As for mineral dust, uh, we will focus on it. Uh, it has uh, a diameter less than uh, 600 microns, uh, but the, uh, the, the particles that will uplift to the atmosphere uh, should be less than uh, 100 microns, which can be transported by sus uh, suspension. Uh, the important thing that the shape of the particles, of dust particles, as you can see in the figure, uh, it, uh, it, is, uh, it has many uh, uh, different shapes, which may be crystals, maybe aggregate uh, particles, uh, irregular particles. All those different shapes will affect the uh, radiative interaction and uh, also the um, morphology and, uh, of the dust particles, which can uh, contain uh, silicate, uh, uh, calcium, um, um, magnesium or any other uh, minerals, it can affect uh, the uh, surface area and then it will modif modify the uh, chemical reaction. This table illustrates the uh, main properties for all uh, of the aerosols, uh, the size, the source, formation, composition, solubility. I'm going to focus on dust, which is uh, for uh, uh, including the, to the coarse mode or coarse mode uh, suspension uh, in the atmosphere, uh, which is uh, largely insoluble, non-hygroscopic, but when some, um, uh, like the uh, iron, it will change its uh, solubility. Uh, also with the travel distance, it has a large, uh, Travel distance it can be for more than ten kilometers. Um, well, for the lifetime it can be uh, stayed in the atmosphere for minutes to days, according to their sizes. Uh, it can finally deposit it due to, to uh, wet deposition and the dry deposition. Here are the dust belt. Con uh, it is expanding from the uh, uh, the uh, North Africa uh, through the Middle East uh, to the uh, Far East. Uh, the major dust sources uh, is the Sahara Desert, the Arabian Peninsula, uh, the Far uh, Desert, the Takalamakan uh, Desert, and so. The uh, meteorological uh, uh, aspects that can um, generate the uh, dust events can be classified to larger scale circulation, to uh, synoptic circulation uh, due to summer shamal, or uh, prefrontal and postfrontal associated with the cold front. It can be with the mesoscale uh, for the haboob with the thunder clouds. It can be with the mesoscale also with emergent uh, uh, down brass due to uh, the contrast between the heat between uh, land and the ocean or the sea. And finally, the micro scale with, or the uh, dry convection, which uh, namely dust devils. 
The dust cycle mainly uh, continue, uh, sorry, include uh, three main parts. Uh, one is the emission from the uh, source uh, of uh, dust like desert. Uh, this will affect uh, by uh, land surface conditions, physical properties of soil and the pressure the friction velocity, which has uh, a very important uh, factor in uh, rising the dust uh, in the atmosphere. Uh, also, the size of the uh, dust particles, where uh, particles more than 500 microns will creep. Uh, and while creeping, it may be a saltation at the, the, uh, the size reached to uh, 70 to 500 microns. And then it will, um, uh, maybe it will be uh, trying, uh, go uh, above uh, in the uh, upper atmosphere if the, uh, the size were, were uh, less than 20 microns for the long-term suspension. During the, this journey uh, to the atmosphere, it can, uh, some factors can affect this transformation, uh, transformation uh, sorry, transportation, which is uh, advection, convection, and diffusion. The dust impacts uh, can be uh, summarized in, uh, on human health by uh, affecting uh, uh, and um, um, causing the, sorry, the role of the dust particles in uh, spreading the uh, uh, coronavirus pandemic. Also, it can affect the visibility, the energy sector, and uh, affect uh, the, uh, the pollutant itself when it uh, they mix with it, and uh, they can uh, interact with, with uh, each other. And in fact, this is a, a very important uh, subject and need uh, a lecture itself. Also, dust uh, uh, has an impact in uh, chemical and biochemical processes. In the figure, we can see that dust emitted from uh, the sources uh, about 2,000 megatons per year. Uh, it can uh, deposit on land about 1,500 uh, uh, megaton per year on the land only, and uh, 500 megaton per year on the ocean. Uh, those dust minerals uh, containing iron, this iron is, uh, um, uh, uh, can, can give nutrition to the uh, phytoplankton, for example, in the sea, which can um, change uh, uh, the phytoplankton uh, activities and life, and can uh, also uh, 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 affect the, uh, the uh, CO2 cycle uh, due to this change. Also, uh, dust particles react and uh, mix with anthropogenic aerosols, uh, which can uh, be uh, work as a cloud in nucleation, uh, condensation in nuclei. Uh, for the uh, direct effect of dust particles, it can have two uh, effects, which is the cooling and the warming effect. For the cooling effect, it was uh, it affected the shortwave radiation uh, by fine dust and uh, it is enhanced over uh, dark surfaces. We can see here uh, there is a uh, dust particle. After a few uh, hours, it can uh, make the uh, uh, the surface cooler than before. While uh, for the uh, absorbing of uh, uh, longer wave radiation uh, emitted from the surface, it can uh, make the warming effect. So uh, dust could play an important role in shaping the future of uh, the climates in North Africa. Uh, Southern Mediterranean region and Middle East and Central Asia due to those effects. Also for the, uh, this is a, in fact, this is a, a study uh, uh, made by uh, a researcher in uh, 2020. It is uh, about uh, studying the uh, uh, radiative effect of dust uh, using wharf cam simulation and using MODIS uh, simulation. And uh, it can uh, be uh, seen uh, for, um, for the uh, period from one to three of April. We can see this, uh, 
was uh, tested uh, for a major dust, so, uh, dust event. And we can see that for both uh, MODIS and dwarf camp, we can see uh, a reduction in, uh, in the uh, shortwave radiation uh, due to the uh, dust event. Uh, this is another study made for uh, the Middle East um, using uh, simulated uh, AOD uh, using the regional model and WARF model and uh, the data uh, acquired from MISAR. We can see that from this figure, uh, uh, when we have a dust event, um, sorry, I think this, yes. When we have a, a dust event here, uh, it is, uh, appeared in the simulated AOD, especially uh, in summer with uh, high AOD. Uh, it is uh, more clear in miser AOD, uh, which have a, a higher value of AOD, indicating that there was a, a huge dust event. We can see here that um, for the uh, uh, radiation uh, uh, forcing uh, related to long wave radiation, we have the heating effect uh, this, this is important part because the um, reduction in uh, um, the long wave uh, uh, radiation, um, it can be the maximum in, uh, uh, was observed in uh, South Arabia uh, Peninsula during uh, summer and minimum perturbation uh, observed uh, in, um, in winter. Um, for the um, aerosol impact, the, the indirect impact on clouds interaction, we can see here uh, an example uh, illustrating uh, the, uh, the effect. We can see here uh, we have a, a clean uh, uh, atmosphere or a clean cloud with clean uh, with polluted cloud. In this case, we have um, if there is a, a clean cloud, it is not uh, clean uh, almost, but um, uh, there must be some uh, aerosols. We, uh, we can see that we have the, uh, the first indirect effect, which is uh, the cloud albedo effect, the Tommy effect, which is uh, indicate that uh, if we have a, um, a little aerosol, a little uh, or small amount of aerosol, we have more number of bigger size clouds, and uh, this will enhance the rain uh, droplets and ice crystals and uh, enhance the cloud albedo. Uh, the second uh, indirect effect for cloud is the cloud lifetime, uh, which is if have we, we have more uh, number of uh, bigger size, it will uh, lead to more precipitation and it decrease the cloud lifetime. Now we have, the, we will take the, uh, the, the case of the, uh, aerosols uh, with polluted uh, atmosphere. Uh, we can see that if there is a polluted cloud, we have more number of small size, not the large size. Uh, this will uh, affect the, uh, uh, the clouds by uh, enhancing cloud albedo uh, and will lead to lesser precipitation, thus will uh, increase the lifetime of uh, cloud and this will lead to more absorption by clouds, uh, increasing the evaporation and the uh, finally to the cloud burning and decrease the cloud lifetime. For the uh, second part, it is the dust identification. Uh, um, it is uh, used in West, uh, we, we know that West Asia and uh, uh, including the Arabian Peninsula, Syria, Iraq and Iran has recognized as the primary sources of dust in the region. Uh, for Iraq, we have uh, mainly salt and the clay uh, uh, as the main uh, types of dust, uh, sorry, of soils. Um, so the uh, primary soils in Iraq, which is salt and the clay, uh, with fine and uh, uh, ultra fine particles, diameter less than 0 0.07 uh, millimeters which can be easily lifted to the atmosphere and causing a dust event. Thus, Iraq uh, include, uh, uh, considered as the prone of dust storm for the uh, region uh, and for the country, uh, neighboring countries. 
uh, for the DOSA identification methods, we have more uh, main uh, uh, processes or methods, which is um, depends on the geomorphic prospectives uh, or back trajectory analysis, uh, the optical properties as acquired from ground base and uh, uh, in situ born instruments like uh, the sun photometers, and uh, finally using the numerical uh, prediction modeling. Uh, for dust. Here, and this is a study uh, made by Salehi uh, in 2018. Uh, he used uh, uh, the optical properties uh, associated with AOD and AE to uh, discriminate between uh, the types of the aerosols. Uh, so we can see uh, related to dust, um, we can see in winter we have uh, the the, on the yellow uh, circle, we have dust with higher values of AOD and uh, smaller values of AE. While for the maritime or uh, urban and biomass, it will uh, be uh, different. Also for the, uh, the case for spring, which, which has more, uh, uh, or more particles of uh, uh, aerosols, uh, which can be uh, due to dust, and uh, uh, so as in summer and uh, autumn. Um, here we can see, uh, as Dr. Merbet uh, uh, says that in Lebanon, maybe they have uh, more pollutant or particular, uh, particulate matters uh, in Lebanon, but for Iraq, we can see that uh, uh, dust uh, have also um, and, uh, contribute in the uh, percentage of um, aerosols uh, especially in uh, spring and summer with uh, higher values. Uh, sorry, I just want to uh, pay your attention about the values here used in this uh, study uh, used for the uh, classification of aerosols depending on the AOD values and the uh, angle exponent for the maritime dust turbine and biomass burning. Uh, those um, those uh, parameters, for me, it is not sufficient uh, to discriminate between uh, other aerosols. So um, they used another parameter, which is the, anger, uh, the absorption uh, in, uh, indices or index uh, as acquired from OMI. Uh, we have seen here that uh, when the values is less than 0.7, as we said with uh, negative values for uh, non-absorbing aerosols, we can see different aerosols, but for the uh, values more than 0.7 with absorbing aerosols, we can uh, have, um, uh, for example, we, we can have sea salt uh, mixed with dust. Um, it is um, also dust or carbon or other uh, aerosols. But for me, I'm focusing on dust. I can see that dust has uh, lower values of A uh, in the summit exponent, higher values, values of AOD and about uh, uh, near to 0.7 uh, value for the uh, um, absorption index. Uh, Iraq has um, four major uh, uh, regions uh, according to the topography, uh, which is Al Jazeera uh, to the uh, west uh, and upland hills. Uh, the alluvial plain uh, between Tigris and Euphrates uh, rivers and the Western Plateau. Uh, here in this study, uh, I, um, I'm introducing to you, I tried to uh, identify the source of uh, dust in Iraq using uh, the aerosol optical properties from spaceborne uh, observation data from, uh, MODIS, MISER, uh, from MODIS and MISER. Uh, MODIS, um, um, including uh, Terra and Aqua. And uh, I used also the uh, absorption uh, aerosol uh, index. We have uh, predefined uh, the values of AOD, AE, and I, AAI uh, to uh, dis discriminate dust from other aerosols. I took the, uh, the AOD values more than or larger than 0.5, uh, AE less than 0.5, the absorbing endosomic exponent, uh, sorry, uh, absorption index 
larger than 0.7. If those uh, uh, conditions uh, were combined, this will lead to uh, discriminate the aerosols as, uh, as it does. Um, the, uh, the data set used uh, for, from uh, 2005 to 2016 using the uh, aerosol optical depth, the deep blue, and uh, for modis uh, aqua and terra for uh, mean of monthly mean. Um, and as I said, it is the uh, aerosol, uh, sorry, absorbing aerosol index from OMI uh, for the same period. We, here the, we can see the results. Um, uh, we can see that for winter, uh, the, uh, the AOD, uh, deep blue, we can see here that uh, uh, there is an, uh, a value of optical depth, but it is not larger than 0.5. Thus, I cannot consider it as a, a dust. Except for uh, February, we can see that the AOD uh, were higher in Al Jazeera uh, region. Uh, so I will move to the, uh, the second uh, stage of the comparison. I will check the A, the Ingrosomic exponent, which has lower values. Um, so I can uh, I can consider it more or less it is uh, dust, but still I need uh, to uh, to check if it is uh, absorbing or not. So we can see here that the uh, the uh, aerosol uh, the absorption uh, aerosol uh, index it is larger than 0.7. So uh, I, um, I, I have a result that uh, this might be dust, uh, dust uh, uh, source. Uh, this is for the aqua and this is uh, for the terra. So uh, we can see that uh, only in February, uh, there is an activation of uh, dust sources, especially for aqua, not for uh, the uh, terra. Here for spring, we can see that the, uh, the AOD uh, get larger or higher values, uh, which is the, um, uh, the season of uh, dust emitting in Iraq uh, due to the uh, summer, uh, sorry, to the uh, north, uh, north, uh, uh, north westerly wind um, and the activation of uh, dust sources. We can see here that we have a larger AOD with the smaller, uh, AE and um, absorbing more than 0.7, which is very clear, uh, especially in the uh, Al Jazeera region, in both Aqua and uh, Terra. And uh, we can see that for Miser AOD, it is uh, less than the AOD from Aqua, which is, uh, it can indicate that it, it cannot capture uh, well the, uh, uh, the dust sources. Um, also for the summer, it is uh, the same dust sources were activated uh, in uh, April, uh, uh, sorry, in, the, uh, in August uh, and uh, in July. Um, for Aqua and uh, Terra, uh, sorry, for, uh, for Aqua, uh, especially in the uh, southeastern of Iraq, we can see here, uh, this is a, a, a hot spot or a major dust source of um, um, Iraq. Uh, for the autumn, uh, we can see that Al Jazeera it can uh, be activated in September for Aqua and Terra. Uh, no uh, dust uh, sources is activated in October and uh, in uh, November uh, in autumn. Uh, according uh, or depending on the uh, techniques that I used. So the conclusion of this study uh, is um, conclude that the Al Jazeera region in the uh, north uh, western of Iraq is activated more uh, most of the year um, in Aqua and in Terra also, and uh, also the south of Iraq uh, is uh, also. Um, activated especially in uh, Terra, it is obvious more. And um, Al Jazeera and the region of South of Iraq considered as a significant dust source most of the year, uh, while the uh, other dust sources is activated in spring and summer months, particularly more than winter and autumn. 
And uh, we, can, we, we realize the difference between Miser and Modest Deep Blue uh, with higher values shown in Modest Deep Blue in Iraq along the month of the year, uh, which, which uh, was due to the lower Miser observation frequency. Um, thank you for listening and uh, I will welcome any questions. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sema, for this interesting presentation. Uh, it's uh, it's highlighted the the uh, the remote sensing part, and uh, as Dr. Mervat highlighted, the chemical or the ground observation. Thank you both. And uh, now, uh, Valentina, uh, for questions, uh, who has a question? I think. Uh, let me read the question. I think. Yeah, uh, this question for uh, Professor Mervat, how many homes and the schools, the data of PM10 and PM2.5 were collected for indoor, uh, indoor air quality sampling? Yes, uh, in fact, uh, we did three homes uh, for uh, uh, home, uh, three homes, one in Farhazir, one in Fia, one in uh, Anfi, in addition to a room in the reserved area of Kaftoun and for schools also three high schools, three schools. The one in Farhazir, one in Bishmazin, and one in Kfarhaka. Why we, we have chosen these schools? Because they are very close to the quarries, to the industries facing the Mediterranean, and you know, are in between, between Balaman University and the industrial areas. Yeah, Manish, if you have any other question, please. Yeah, I, I, I would like to ask one few uh, quick question. I mean, it's just a uh, point regarding indoor air pollution specifically because indoor air quality is also subject to the income inequality also. For example, uh, even I'm not well aware of the socioeconomic uh, conditions of the city where the samples were taken, but uh, if, for example, if we, if we uh, take sample from a home, uh, from a very poor family and another home with rich, uh, where they have more clean options for cooking, I suppose the results could be quite different. So um, my perspective is, uh, uh, what, what I mean, should we try to get some more samples or maybe considering the income inequality in the city or region, something like that? Thank you very much for the question. It's very, very important questions. Uh, as, as I mentioned, the, the Kura region is a wealthy region. You know, the, uh, it is not similar to India. You know, uh, the cooking is in a house on the gas, you know, on the, fire gas like this. Uh, we don't have uh, wood uh, for, uh, for food, to, to cook the food on, you know? So, uh, and also uh, you have, um, I don't know if you are familiar with the air quality measurement, the outdoor air quality, it was uh, measured by gravimetric uh, equipment, you know? That's mean we are, we were weighing the, um, the samples before the filter and after the filter and uh, with the flow rate uh, of the machine itself where we can get accurate results. In the indoor uh, air quality, we use a portable machine. Portable machine, this machine doesn't, you know, the phenomena of, um, of this machine is, is completely different than the phenomena of a gravimetric. So that's why we had to make conversion from the PPM into concentration and then uh, to, to get the, the real data and try, trying to, to see how much is the concentrations in indoor, okay? But uh, I, I want to say something as that the, the, the measurement we are doing 24 out of, of 24. So during the day and at night, because in Lebanon and in this uh, district, we know very well that the industries are working at night and not during the day. To, and not only that, they put projectors close or opposite to, to the, uh, you know, stack uh, 
uh, in a way, if you want to take photos to, to see how much uh, is the concentration of the stack, uh, you cannot take any photo. You know, another group, group of my students, we did the, the same study, a similar study to see the, uh, the, the, comp the particulate matter, let's say, in uh, coming out of uh, these industries, but all of the, the, the photos were blurring. You know, you cannot see anything. Only very, very close to the early morning, around 5, 5.30 in the early morning, where, you know, the day starts. So you can see the, the concentration that the, really they were uh, uh, operating these industries at night and not during the day. Uh, here, uh, sorry, I, ha I, I forget to, to mention, I have to thank uh, the, the master students who did his uh, master thesis on this issue. He is uh, Mr. Isam uh, Tamer. And also I would like to, to thank my, the moderator of this uh, thesis, which is Dr. Amal Iali, who have in uh, GIS maps uh, from the university and the region. He uh, have in, in these two. Yes. Yeah, thank you, uh, Professor. I have a very quick question. And uh, yes. based on the questionnaire, how you define the air quality? Like, uh, is it poor or it's very poor? Like, you did the questionnaire, right? Yes, of so course. How the, yes. how the normal people will know this air quality is poor? So it or... depends on their area. You know, as I told you, this is a casa. Uh, okay. some some of the villages who are uh, which are facing these industries and which has health problems you know they said okay we 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 are you know we have problems out of these industries but so based uh, on their based on their experience like whether it is yeah. uh, so they, they, like... because you know the people um, a person who is sick you know you cannot say oh you are not sick he is sick he cannot <laughs> breathe he cannot do anything you know okay so yeah uh, so based on the question, and as I told you, around uh, we did 280 um, uh, questionnaires, you yeah. know? Okay, okay. Out of them, for the people who didn't understand, you know, some people maybe not interested, out of them, 250 really, they answered the questions pro uh, professionally. And okay. these are the people who are uh, from the university, probably from who are uh, living in the in the critical areas and who have uh, health effects. Yeah, uh, there's one question from Trad Dagamin: uh, How much the earlier Beirut uh, explosion in Lebanon yes. 2020 affect the air quality? Uh, is there any study happened? Uh, it is under now the you know, many universities, the American University of Beirut, the University of Balamad, and many other universities. You know they are working on the uh, on this issue, and uh, there are projects. You know um, something very important. There is a big difference between a project and a master study. So the okay. master study is funded, you know, by no one, but a project is funded by an institutions or by an organization. So the big project for the Beirut explosion, uh, Beirut airport uh, explosion uh, is funded by uh, organization, international organization. I don't want to mention the names, you know. Okay. Just, yeah. <laughs> you know, like that. Uh, it's okay. Is there any question for uh, uh, Dr. Sama? Let me check. Is there any question? I don't see any, any question. Uh, if someone has a question or maybe when someone is watching watching the presentation again, you can always yeah. write uh, to telco at yescommunity.org. I already wrote the email in the chat. So if you have yeah. any question you can send to us um, and we will forward it to the, to the speakers. Um, so I, I don't want to steal more time from you because I know that in your region is already late. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, and we are we are running late actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so thank you yeah. everyone uh, for your time today and for participating. We will upload this this presentation in the upcoming days to our YouTube channel. I will send you also the link uh, via email. And if you have any questions, you can always um, contact us. And I also want to to say a huge thank you to. Mervat and Sama for your really interesting presentations. Um, it was a pleasure to, to hear you. And also to Manish for, for your time uh, presenting your, your experience uh, in the YES community. Thank you, Valentina, as well. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, Thank you. for uh, 
joining us and listening to us and asking us the, uh, the questions that you find, you felt that uh, you need answers on them. Uh, thank you very much again. And uh, really, we are ready to support, to help, to uh, you know, answer all the questions that uh, might rise from the participants. OK, thank you very much. See you guys. Thank, thank you, Dr. Allah. See you. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.